guys, welcome back to the garden. Today I've put together a tutorial for you all to show you how I built the archways I use in my garden all the time. I've tried to make it as simple as possible to navigate, so I have put bookmarks for each section so that you can skip to the step that you need, including a section at the end where I do a complete cost breakdown. On the steps, I try to show you my best tips and tricks as well as things to avoid so that yours turns out better than my first try did. Um, if you guys find this helpful at all, please give it a thumbs up over on Utah, YouTube and share my channel around. That's really going to help me grow my channel. I'm hoping someday that YouTube pays for my plants. All right, let's get into it. A quick overview of how to make the archway. You're going to bend the arch. You're going to cut some conduit to create the legs. Drive in your rebar. Install your legs, add the archway using couplers, and zip tie on your fencing. Okay, you're going to need conduit. Four, I'm using four 10 foot half inch EMT conduits per archway. You need a tape measure, a sharpie, a way to cut the fencing. I'm using welded wire fencing. A hammer. This is the best spray paint that I found so far. The flat is it's really helpful because it doesn't show all the imperfections. The stops rust is awesome because it protects it from the elements. And the enamel means it's much more durable. You need a block so that when you're hammering your stuff in the ground, you're not bending it up. If you mess up the conduit when you're driving it in the ground, it won't fit in the coupler. So you need four couplers per archway and four pieces of rebar. I, these are about two and a half feet long. And then you need a way to cut the conduit. Cutting the conduit and the rebar, you need a metal. Uh, this is a chop saw with a metal saw blade on it. You could use a hacksaw, but doing that by hand is gonna be really, really tiring. So I highly recommend um, a chop saw and a metal blade. These are some arches that I built or that I bent uh, a couple of years ago and they're doing well you can see I didn't have the experience then so I didn't spray paint them before I put in the ground and this part was in the ground and it got a little bit rusty they'll still work I just have to sand them up so that they'll I might have to do even a little filing so that they'll fit in the uh, the coupler the key piece is this so this I built myself it's just a jeg some plywood I think this is just, yeah, it's just half inch plywood. Some, um, just some scrap two by four, some screws. This is the nail I put in. It is 18 inches and I used a little string to make a compass. And then I went straight down where the conduit's gonna go. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow me to bend against this. Now this, if I try to bend on this, it's gonna move every which way. So I'm gonna put some rebar in the ground to stake it and hold it in place. Use rebar to keep your jig from shifting. No rebar above the arch, it will get in the way of bending the conduit. Find and mark the center of your conduit. Put that center at the bottom of the jig right by the two by four. To bend the second half of the curve, slide the conduit up, making sure that you're grabbing below the curve before bending. Otherwise, it has a tendency to put weird kinks in and make it come out uneven. Notice on the second archway, I didn't follow my own advice and it doesn't come out as nice. Okay, so this is the part that most people are scared of. You're gonna be cutting metal. There will be sparks. If you have a collection bag on, it will catch on fire. Ask me how I know. Uh, I just marked a halfway point on the conduit. And then... So 
some of these, the conduit fitting isn't going to want to go on because it has this big, that's a huge burr just coming out. So I just take a file. This end is the sharp end, so you don't want to touch that raw metal with your hands. It will cut you. but usually once around is enough that the coupler will fit on. Okay, so next what we're gonna do is we're gonna drive the rebar into the ground. We want it to be in the ground at least a foot and a half. And then we put this over the top, we slip this over the top. And I like to put this in the ground about a foot. So let me show you. So then I'm just gonna take this guy. He's coming in a little bit, but that's okay. I'm gonna put him Right there. I think that looks pretty good. Now that I have it marked in the ground, because we've recently had rain, this is easy. If you if your yard is really hard to drive this into, water it. Okay, we're just gonna do it here and watch how easy this is. Done. I like to make sure it fits. That looks good. Obviously this is too short. This is without the legs. <laughs> Some words of caution. The first time I did this, I left the couplers on and just banged into them with a hammer. The coupler went down and got stuck over the whole pipe. That was not great. Next, if you hammer directly on the pipe, it will be misshapen and it will not want to fit in this coupler. So you absolutely need to use a throwaway block. So, I like to have these, these are five feet tall. I like to put them in about a foot because it makes it a really stable structure. I'm flipping these over so the rough side goes into the ground and the factory sides up. It just means less work for me. hoping that you can see that this is crooked it's leaning this way and even though I used the level to get these dead level I forgot that since I bent the hoop it's gonna be uneven so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drive this down a little bit more because I like I think the height's about right I'm five foot eight and I'm reaching as high as I can and they're still probably six inches and that's about how I like it I like it so that if there's stuff hanging down and growing over the arch, I don't have to duck too much. So let's get to it. That looks really 
good. Now the next step I'm not actually going to do because again, this is temporary. I'm going to be changing the garden. Let me show you what I mean. Can you see? Oh. Okay, so I have two big garden beds here and these big archways match up, but this is offset by like a foot and a half. I'm going to be extending this to match that. So I'm going to be adjusting this whole gardening bed to mirror the other side. So that way it's nice and symmetrical. But because these aren't in permanently, I don't, I'm not ready for the next step because it requires me to cut the fencing. So I'm going to need to cut this fencing into the right width for whatever archway I'm going to do. Let me show you on these archways over here that I have built. So what I did is I used a fence panel. I cut one side and that determined the width. And I used that same fence panel to cut and determine and place all four corners of the archway. There's three panels here. So there's one on the bottom, one across the top and one on the side. And mine are five foot tall. So this is five feet to here. And then it's five feet across and then five feet down. I'm going to recommend that you put the middle one on first. I just put it on with some zip ties and I took both archways down to put the top one on so I didn't have to get on a ladder. Then I installed the archway, put the fencing on the sides, and then you'll notice I don't put the fencing all the way to the ground because if you put it all the way to the ground it makes it very hard to weed and to get in and to be able to work your soil. Also on the big ones, you'll notice I put them pretty far from the ground, about 18 inches, because it's these are gonna be big beds. It's hard to get in. I need to be able to have access to get on on this side. So that just makes it a lot easier. But the goal is to just have a really, really beautiful garden. I'm back. I forgot to tell you about price breakdown, which was the main motivating reason for me. I'm a teacher. I don't have a ton of extra money. Although, admittedly, it does pretty much all go to the garden. But doesn't it look great? You can't be un you can't be mad in a happy garden. And look at the pear tree. The pear tree looks amazing right now. And it's perfectly framed down my archway alley. Okay, sorry. So price breakdown. Let's do price breakdown. So the little connectors um, are two fifty for a pack of five. The conduit you need four of them. You need four to make one archway, which is going to be uh, six fifty a piece. So that comes out to twenty six dollars total for one set. The fencing, the welded wire fencing, is expensive. It's one hundred and twenty nine dollars for a hundred foot roll. So that's a dollar twenty nine for a one foot wide section that's five feet tall granted you can't buy it by the foot you have to buy the whole roll um, so if you price it out per foot it comes out to 1161 for the welded wire fencing uh, use about one can of spray fit paint for two archways so 698 is how much a can of spray, uh, spray paint costs I used one 10 foot rebar to make the stakes that you drive into the ground. I just cut it into 2.5 foot sections. That's 30 inches. So that was $5.98. And then some zip ties. Zip ties are about a penny a piece. I just get them from Harbor Freight. Oh, maybe use 25, so 25 cents. So the grand total is $53.33. And for the really big ones, I'm going to be putting together a video, not necessarily a tutorial, but just how I made these really big ones. I use T-Post and I'll put the numbers all on the screen, but it comes out to $221.78 for everything together. So the, all three of these arches and that really big arch that I built, um, all of that together came out to about $390 to build this really 15, this is 15 foot wide, 10 foot tall, eight feet wide. And this has three archways and I connected it with some extra fencing and then there was still a little bit of extra fencing after that probably enough to make one or two extra archways but that would have been more in conduit 
All right, hopefully this was helpful. If this was helpful at all, if y'all could give me a thumbs up, please. It helps my channel a lot. I'm trying to be able to pay for my gardening habit and hopefully get to inspire others to love their garden and to turn their yard into a garden. Thanks so much for watching. Thank <laughs> you.